NASA is on a mission to keep the world safe. Later today, NASA's double asteroid redirection test, also known as START, will intentionally crash into a near-Earth asteroid in the name of planetary defense. The question is, can we redirect an asteroid if we ever needed to? Here to tell us more about this exciting mission is NASA expert Kelly Fast. Kelly, this mission sounds like it could be right out of an action movie. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're expecting to happen tonight? Right, DART does sound like it could be out of an action movie, but it's real life and it's uh, the, the real kind of most uh, technically simple way that you would uh, divert an asteroid is the idea of a kinetic impact. Uh, just impacting an asteroid with a spacecraft. And so DART was launched back in November and it's made its way out to this asteroid system, Didymos, with this moonlit Dimorphos. And DART is going to make its way to the system. It's going to lock on with its uh, self-guidance and it is going to impact the smaller moon of the asteroid Didymos, Dimorphos, just to slightly change the period of its orbit around the larger asteroid. And this is a way to test if we ever had to deflect an asteroid uh, in real life, um, could we do it? And how exactly does it work when you're working with, with real objects in space? It really sounds so interesting and incredible. And so this DART mission, it's about planetary defense. Can you tell us a little bit about what planetary defense is and what we're hoping from this mission and from this test? Right, planetary defense, uh, it's been said it's finding asteroids before they find us, and then I like to say, and then maybe getting asteroids before they get us. NASA funds telescopes to survey the skies every night, uh, looking for asteroids, finding ones that we don't yet know about, getting them in the catalog, calculating their orbits, and figuring out where they're going to be in the future to see if any might actually be where Earth is in the future. And if that's the case, if you know years ahead of time, then you could actually divert an asteroid so that it could miss Earth in the future. And so that's where DART comes in. Uh, we have this kind of unique opportunity that nature has given us uh, to do this test on an asteroid that doesn't pose an impact threat to Earth. Um, and it's this double asteroid system. And so it's kind of a chance to say, OK, let's see if we can change the orbit of that small asteroid around the larger asteroid. It's something that can be measured using telescopes on the ground by looking at the light coming from that system. And so we have this nice kind of marrying of a, of a spacecraft mission, ground-based telescopes, and all of this uh, to test a deflection technique so that if we ever do find an asteroid that poses an impact threat, and if we find it years or decades in advance, we've got a tool in the toolbox to be able to uh, to possibly address that. Right, and that brings me to another question is what, I mean, I'm just so curious about this. What is the likelihood of this asteroid being big enough to cause danger to the earth in, in the future? What, what would we do? Like what would a huge natural disaster, what is the likelihood of that happening? Right, well, again, the Didymos system doesn't pose a threat to Earth, and we couldn't even make it a threat. And so that's why it's such a good uh, test case uh, to try out uh, this uh, uh, impact uh, uh, deflection uh, technique uh, with the kinetic impact. Um, but the uh, moonlet that uh, DART will be impacting uh, is about 160 meters in size, uh, which is kind of that size range that uh, NASA is um, more concerned about and that Congress has even tasked NASA with finding objects of that size range because of the really large asteroids that could have global consequences should they impact. There's fewer of them, they're larger, they're easier to find. Uh, they're not, we're not finding many of them uh, every year. And so not so much worried about that size range. And, and the smaller asteroids, uh, uh, maybe a few meters in size that uh, impact Earth, they just make pretty fireballs in the sky because we've got an atmosphere that protects us pretty well. But kind of that, that middle range of uh, asteroids that are large enough to make it to the surface and possibly uh, pose a you know, regional uh, hazard uh, should they impact the 
earth. Um, uh, that's why DART is, is such a good test because it is uh, a type of tool that could be used on asteroids in that size range if, if they, uh, 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 what Congress has tasked NASA with is 140 meters and larger. We want to find any asteroid out there that might pose an impact threat. Um, and the nice thing is we don't know of any right now. You know, nothing poses a significant you know, threat to Earth. And so this is the time to do this kind of test. And also, this is the time to keep finding them, keep finding them, and keep finding them so that we know and have plenty of notice should we ever need to do something like this for real. That's incredible. And how would we find out what happens to Dimorphos after this collision of the DART spacecraft happens later on? Right. Well, uh, uh, this evening here Eastern, when um, the uh, impact broadcast is happening, the images are going to come in from the DART spacecraft uh, showing uh, Dimorphos getting larger and larger, and then eventually uh, the signal will drop out. Um, and this is a real tough thing that uh, the team is doing to be able to navigate into, into a small asteroid moving so fast. And so, but they, they've done a fantastic job planning for this. But the mission doesn't end with that. Uh, uh, the Italian the Space Agency uh, uh, also put a CubeSat on DART, which has been released, and it's going to take images as it passes the asteroid of the impact and maybe any material that's dislodged, and so we're hoping for some good imagery from that. But what is going to actually determine if DART did what was intended or how much, really, because it's pretty confident that DART is going to do something. The question is how much. Um, that's all going to be determined from ground-based telescopes because even though uh, D uh, Didymos and Dimorphos is so far away, it just looks like a point of light in the telescope. But that point of light uh, gets brighter and fainter and brighter and fainter as they go around each other in front and behind and front and behind. And what DART will be changing is the period of the orbit of that smaller asteroid around the larger one. And so it'll change the period of that up and down. And so telescopes on the ground are hopefully going to be able to tell us in uh, hopefully the next few weeks um, and then even more precisely over the coming months how much DART diverted Dimorphos and what we can learn about uh, the physics of actually doing asteroid impact on an asteroid that has actual structure, actual surface structure, material on the surface. Uh, is it even more efficient than we thought it might be? Is it less efficient? But the team is pretty certain we're going to see something and the question is how much? Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Again, where can our viewers go to learn more about DART? Right. You can go to uh, nasa.gov slash DART mission, and there's links to the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab that uh, hosts the DART mission and uh, to other resources on DART and also nasa.gov slash planetary defense, which uh, talks about all of the uh, activities that NASA does, uh, planetary defense, finding asteroids, missions like DART, uh, coordinating with uh, other agencies and international partners, and just everything that, uh, that NASA is doing to try to uh, uh, address what is a, a very low likelihood, but could be high consequences type event. And so, uh, 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 so we're, we're keeping on. Well, it really is so interesting. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining us and telling us all about the START mission. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And again, this evening, you can go to nasa.gov slash live to actually see it happening starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. But thank you for having me. Thank you. Can't wait.